In this lecture, we will try and understand what is a budget constraint and what is a budget line. We will also do some very basic applications related to the budget line. Now, you know, let us try and understand first of all what is a budget constraint. To understand that, we want to define something which is known as a consumption bundle. A consumption bundle is basically anything which is a list of two numbers. Now, you know, this, this bundle actually tells me how much of the two goods I am consuming. How much of good one I am consuming and how much of good two I am consuming. Now, if you really look at it, then a consumption bundle can be, you know, if I'm talking about good one and good two, I can say I'm consuming x1 units of good one and x2 units of good two. I can also have a consumption bundle which looks like this. I consume x units of good one and y units of good two. Or x1 units of good x, any way of representation is y is fine, y1 units of good y. What is the aim? The aim is just to go ahead and to show two numbers. I'm just, the aim is just to show these two numbers and these two numbers basically, you know, kind of tell me how much level of, you know, uh, consumption I am doing of the two commodities. So, you know, X1 tells me how much of good one I am consuming and X2 tells me how much of good two I am consuming. Now, you know, ideally, it is not wrong to have a consumption bundle which is, uh, you know, more than two good so, for example, if I have a consumption bundle which looks like x1, x2, x3 and it goes all the way till xn, this would be a right consumption bundle. There is nothing wrong with this consumption bundle. So, this just tells me how much of, you know, amount consumed for good 1. This just tells me amount consumed for good 2, amount consumed for good 3 amount consumed for good n and so on. So, there is nothing wrong with it. But what you have to try and understand here is that, you know, the plotting may become a little difficult. So, for example, let's say that I talk about a three, uh, you know, three good consumption bundle. Let's say I talk about a consumption bundle which is x1, x2, x3. And I ask you, how would you plot this consumption bundle? Then ideally, the plotting would look something which is across the three axes. You get it? I will have an axis which represents, you know, it, it's like a 3D diagram. So I might have an axis which is my x-axis. I may have my y axis and I may have my z axis. So that ways, you know, if I have to kind of draw any bundle, you know, that bundle would represent how much of good x, y and z I am consuming or good 1, 2 and 3 I am consuming. So in that sense, you know, this consumption bundle will become very difficult to plot. Now imagine when you talk about an n good consumption bundle. Then ideally, you know, in order to plot this, I will have to, you know, kind of look at n axis. And then in that, in that n dimension space, I will have to go and plot my consumption bundle. Even more difficult. 
So because the idea is just to understand what budget nine is all about, we really do not require to go ahead and talk about uh, an N consumption bundle, N commodity consumption bundle, and a two commodity consumption bundle suffices. It solves the same purpose as an N commodity consumption bundle. Now, you know, so ideally I represent my consumption bundle as X and you know, I'm writing X is equal to X1 comma X2. X1 is the units of good one that I, that you consume and X2 is the units of good two that you consume. Now, you know, we also define a vector. This is a vector. Okay. Why am I saying that this is a vector? Because, you know, in a way, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give some, uh, you know, I'm going to plot it and I'm going to find the slopes of my budget line. I'm going to do a mathematical thing. So, you know, you, you usually call a price bundle as a price vector because you know you in a way you're dealing with um something which is more dimensional right it's at, at least two dimensional all right so yeah right so now i have a, a price uh, vector or a price bundle and this price bundle is again p1 comma p2 p1 is the price of good one And P2 is the price of good 2. Now, you know, the consumer, when he starts his journey, has a certain level of income to begin with. So, M is the level of income of the consumer. Now, you know, if I ask you a simple question as to how much the consumer can spend, then he cannot spend more than his income. So, at any point of time, whenever we talk about the expenditure of the consumer, the expenditure of the consumer cannot be more than the income of the consumer. So, it has to be less than or at max equal to the income of the consumer. How is the consumer doing a level of expenditure? Either he is consuming good one from it or he is consuming good two from it. These are the two things that he can possibly do. How much of good one is he consuming? He is consuming x1 units of good one. How much of good two is he consuming? He is consuming x2 units of good two. What's the price of each unit of good one? P1. So, P1 into X1, that is the total money that the consumer is spending on good one. What is the price of each unit of good two? P2. So, P2 into X2, that's the total expenditure of the consumer on good two. When the consumer adds these two together, that's the total expenditure of the consumer. The expenditure of the consumer cannot be more than the income of the consumer. So, this is the final budget constraint that we have. The budget constraint suggests that at any point of time, the expenditure of the consumer on the two commodities or in commodities, ideally doing a two commodity case, can always be taken back to an N commodity case. So, the expenditure that is incurred by the consumer cannot outweigh the income of the consumer. So here P1 X1 is the amount of money that the consumer is spending on good one. P2 X2 is the amount of money that the consumer is spending on good two. And if you add these two, that's the total expenditure of the consumer or the total money that the consumer spends on the two commodities, the total money that the consumer spends on the two commodities has to be less than the income of the consumer. Now, 
any bundle that satisfies this equation is known as an affordable bundle. So a bundle is called an affordable in bundle if the money or the expenditure that you spend that you you know are spending on that bundle either that expenditure is less than or equal to the income of the consumer if either of the thing is satisfied then it is called as an affordable bundle let's see here now let's do a few questions and see if you understand the concept of affordable bundle so take the case one the price of good x is 4 the price of good y is 10 income of the consumer is 100 tell me whether 4 comma 20 is an affordable bundle so let's try and see this i know that the expenditure that i am doing on good x that is p1 into x1 i am buying four units of good x each is worth four rupees i'm spending 16 rupees on good x similarly the expenditure that i'm spending on good y is p y x uh, p y into y either you can write it like this or you know it can be p 2 x 2 whatever you feel like good to whatever okay and uh, you are buying 20 units at a price of 10 rupee per unit so you know this is good buy. okay so this is 5 into sorry 20 into 10 which is 200 rupees so the total money required for you to buy 4 units of good x and 20 uh, units of good y will be 16 plus 200 which will be 216 but the money that you have is just 100 so we understand that this is not an affordable bundle now let's take another example and see if we are talking about an affordable bundle the price of good x is 1 the price of good y is let's say Fourth, the bundle that I am talking about is the consumption bundle 5, 15. The income of the consumer is the same, 100. And let's see if this is, a, this is an affordable bundle at the given prices or not. So the expenditure on good X will be the number of units. You're buying 5 units of good X into the price per unit. So 5 rupees. The expenditure on good Y will be the number of units, 15, this one, into 4, price per unit. So this is rupees 60. So the total expenditure that you are incurring is rupees 65. Rupees 65 is definitely less than the income which is 100. So yes, it is affordable. Right? And actually here you are going to save some amount. 
So you're not spending your entire income, you're saving 35 bucks. Now let's take one last example. So let's say that the price of good X is 2, the price of good Y is 4 and the bundle that I'm talking about, that bundle let's say is 20 comma let's say 50 and the income of the consumer is 100. Let's see how much is the expenditure of the consumer. So expenditure of consumer on good X is Px into X which is 2 into 20 which is 40. The expenditure on good Y is Py into Y which is each unit is worth 4 rupees and you are buying 15 units so 60 rupees. The total expenditure is 100 rupees. And the income of the consumer is also 100 rupees. So ideally, yes, it is affordable because you're not spending more than your income. You're spending exactly equal to your income. So it, yes, it is an affordable bundle. But here you are on your, and we'll talk about this a little later. Here you're on your budget line, which means you are exhausting your entire budget. Whereas here, when I talk about the other case, here you are not on your budget line, here you are below your budget line. You're not exhausting your entire income in this case, right? Now, you know, let's take a further scenario of understanding how do we draw the budget line. So if I talk about the budget line, this is how we draw our budget line. Of course, we'll understand more clearly as to, you know, how do I get this intercept? How do I get this intercept? But for now, what you have to understand is any bundle which is on the budget line. That is exhausting consumers income completely. So completely exhausts or finishes consumers income. It's like case three that we just studied. <laughs> but any bundle which is here, this bundle is not exhausting the complete income of the consumer. So it is an affordable bundle for sure. But some income is left. You're not completely exhausting your income. Whereas any budget, you know, any uh, point which is here, this is above the budget line, right? So this is not even affordable. So this is a non-affordable. So any bundle which is below the budget line, that is affordable, but is not exhausting the complete income. This is affordable and is using the complete income. This is not even affordable. These are the three scenarios which are possible. Now, Ideally, any bundle which is affordable, whether it is below the budget line or on the budget line, it satisfies the budget equation or the budget constraint. It satisfies the budget constraint. And how does it satisfy the budget constraint? It satisfies the budget constraint because the budget constraint really tells me that the expenditure on the two goods has to be either less than or equal to the income. Less than is satisfied in examples like this, which is below the budget line and equal to is satisfied on the budget line. But as long as a bundle is satisfying this budget constraint till that point, if a bundle satisfies this budget constraint, this is known as a budget set. So a budget set consists of all those bundles which are affordable. That's my budget.